Hi, I'm Michelle. I have a fun and eminently useful project for you. I hesitate to even call it a project because it is very easy. What we're going to do today is make cutting board conditioner. You may have heard it called spoon butter. Well, whether you call it cutting board conditioner or spoon butter, what it is is a product, a salve basically that protects and preserves your wooden spoons, cutting boards, all your wooden kitchen utensils, butcher block, even this simple stained wooden chair frame that I'm sitting in. If you have a favorite wooden spoon like I do, or cutting board, you've noticed that the ravages of hot water and knives take their toll on these items and can leave the grain looking dry, grainy, or even rough. Well, we are gonna fix that today with spoon butter and give all your wooden utensils a spa treatment. I'm looking forward to sharing this with you, but first, let me welcome you to Chocolate Box Cottage. I'm Michelle and I share useful, beautiful, and thrifty ideas to help you create your own cozy cottage. If this sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll click the subscribe button. Well, our recipe today for spoon butter, if you can call it that, only takes three ingredients, beeswax, mineral oil, and refined coconut oil. Beeswax. Support your local beekeeper. No, seriously, seek out a beekeeper and buy some beeswax from them, a bar or a brick. There's so many uses for beeswax. You can make beeswax wraps, you can make herbal salves, lip balms. Once you have some beeswax on hand, you'll find lots of uses for it. Avoid the beeswax that is pelleted. The pelleted form, most of it is imported and unregulated. Mineral oil, look for the words food grade on the label. You can find mineral oil at your local hardware store, uh, discount stores, de department stores and big box stores should also carry it. Smell it, it shouldn't have any aroma. And our final ingredient is coconut oil, refined coconut oil. Save your virgin coconut oil for cooking. It can go rancid and ruin a whole batch of spoon butter. So stick with refined. It will say refined on the label and it's available less expensively than virgin coconut oil. And give it a smell. It shouldn't have a neutral aroma, if any. It won't have that luscious coconut smell that the virgin coconut oil does. For supplies, you're going to need a kitchen scale, and a grater. We're also going to improvise a double boiler from a pan and a heat proof bowl. And you will need some small jars or containers to put your spoon butter in for storage. That's it. All right, let's get into the kitchen and get started. First, we will set up our double boiler. Choose a small to medium heat proof glass bowl and set it in a pan on the stove. Fill the pan, the pan only, not the bowl, with warm water. What you're doing is creating a water bath. Set the temperature for medium low and let that begin heating while you prepare the ingredients. Our recipe today is a ratio rather than the standard US cup measurements and a scale makes this very easy. Now don't worry if you don't have a kitchen scale, follow along. You can estimate and it will be fine. Use a box grater to grate the beeswax. We're making a small batch of spoon butter today so a handheld grater is perfect. If I were making a larger batch, say for Christmas gifts, I might consider pulling the food processor out of the cupboard and using it to grate the beeswax using the grating disc. However, the handheld grater is much easier to clean. So our ratio is one part beeswax, two parts mineral oil, and one part coconut oil. And don't worry about trying to remember that. I'll post it below for you. Very simple. One, two, one. Okay, so we're going to use two ounces of grated beeswax. And part of that is going to come from candle scraps. Yes, you can use the trimmings and stubs from pure beeswax candles to make spoon butter. Make sure that they are pure beeswax candles, no paraffin or other ingredients. 
beeswax grates just like a, a hard cheese would. And I've already grated enough here for our two ounces. So let's add that to our water bath. And since we're using two ounces of beeswax, that means we'll be using four ounces of mineral oil. And two ounces of coconut oil. Okay. I like to grate the beeswax first and weigh it first because that way I can use that amount to help me determine the other two amounts for the other two ingredients. We're going to set this on low heat here and let it melt. I like to use a small silicone spatula like this one for stirring, but any spoon will work. We need the beeswax to melt completely, and this will take about 15 to 20 minutes. The last little bits of beeswax are just dissolving into the oils. Wonderful. Now protecting your hands, carefully lift the bowl from the water bath and set it on a folded rag to protect the bowl and the counter from thermal shock. Allow it to cool slightly. Within a few minutes you'll notice a layer, a skin-like layer beginning to form on the surface of the mixture. And what you want to do is take a fork or a mini whisk and whisk the mixture to reincorporate it. Whisk it briskly for about 30 to 60 seconds. And then about every 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the size batch that you made, you'll want to whisk again for 30 to 60 seconds. This will keep the beeswax from forming a hard layer on the surface. When it reaches the stage of looking like softened butter, then we're ready to put it into containers. When the color has turned creamy and the consistency is like very, very soft butter, then it's time to put it in containers. I'm going to divide it between these two jelly jars. But you can use uh, repurposed containers that you've saved from things that you've bought. I like to save containers from, oh, things like yogurt cups or cottage cheese containers, um, lozenge tins, or ask other people to save those things for you. And you can clean them out and keep them ready. Okay, we're going to try to scrape every little bit out of here that we can because that'll make our cleanup so much easier. So a, rubber, a silicone spatula like this is really helpful for this. Okay, I think we've done a pretty good job. We're going to smooth it down into the containers. And since we stirred it while it was cooling, that'll keep our consistency nice and even. We won't have separation in the layers. And it's time to add labels and lids. I just keep it pretty simple. I like to use a piece of masking tape and a Sharpie for myself. If I was giving this as a gift, I would probably consult Pinterest and find a cute label. You've got two little jars ready to go. So clean up. Uh, do not pour any of this down your drain. It will solidify. What you want to do is take a paper towel and wipe out as much as you possibly can. Get it as clean as you can. And then wash with hot soapy water. And you should be safe. And now for the most rewarding part. I'm going to give my favorite wooden spoon the spoon butter treatment. Take a small amount on a soft, clean, dry cloth and rub it into the wood, working with the grain of the wood. Wow. Look how it just soaks right in. Beautiful. Let's do the same for my favorite wooden cutting board. A little spoon butter. And oh my, it's like magic. I can see the wood grain just come alive. And it smells like honey and flowers. And like honey, beeswax is antibacterial. Now some items if they feel rough to the touch, you may want to give them a light sanding with a, a piece of very fine grit sandpaper to smooth them out. 
thinking about this inexpensive wooden spoon, smooth it out first before giving it the spoon butter treatment. And I'll probably do the same with my great grandmother's rolling pin. It's been stored for a long time and it's, it's discolored and I would love to restore it to its former glory. So I'll probably sand it first and then give it some spoon butter. Well, I'm gonna take some time and give the spoon butter treatment to all my favorite kitchen utensils. I'm even gonna rub some into this tabletop here, which I use as a kneading bench for kneading bread dough and rolling out pie crusts and making my grandmother's German and Norwegian recipes. There's something so rewarding about taking good care of humble kitchen utensils, isn't there? Thank you for joining me today in Chocolate Box Cottage. It always means a lot if you give me a thumbs up. And if you like ideas and recipes like this, I hope you'll subscribe. Remember to click that little notification bell that'll let you know when I add a new video. And I'll see you next time. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.